But this session today hopefully is going to help pull together all of the ideas and the thinking of, of where you've been over the last few days so that you go home with a plan. I know many of you are feeling like your heads are about to explode. We actually um, ha have Dr Ken Hudson with us. He was our facilitator on Wednesday, the first day, deliberately to work with us to sort of try and have us thinking about those couple of key things and hopefully ask some questions that you've continued to ask yourself over the last few days. And he is going to have in this last session now an opportunity to work with you to bring it all together so you can go home with a package that you can work with instead of feeling like uh, you're overloaded. So on that note, uh, most of you would have met Dr Ken Hudson on Wednesday. He started the Idea Centre. I know that Somebody here was a student of one of yours in one of your un university classes in the oh. past. Um, did they pass? I think they did, and they're continuing <laughs> well, to do very well today. Still so, to me, Dr. Ken Hudson. Thank you. Congratulations, you're still here. This is fantastic. Uh, I, I'm not going to show any PowerPoint uh, uh, slides, I just talk. And I just get you guys to actually um, to do work and um, to interact and uh, think hopefully in a more powerful way. But um, it's quite bright, isn't it, those lights? I'm just wondering, um, can I have everyone, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I know you're comfortable, can everyone um, kind of move up here so we form a sort of creative community? And uh, the guys over here, if you could come over here, if that was all right. I'm not an expert in CSR, so uh, my business is around innovation and creativity, and my doctorate's in uh, organisational creativity. So you're the experts on CSR, and um, I'm sure you're more of an expert after the last three days. So uh, I just want to um, work with you and hopefully give you some tools to um, help you some, solve some of the, the problems or issues or opportunities that you've probably um, uncovered or unlocked in the last uh, few days. So what I'd like to do is um, we just need to, uh, I've just been, uh, had my Kung Fu lesson this morning. Um, I learned uh, Shaolin Kung Fu. I've been learning for a couple of years now. And uh, my Sifu is, a, um, is uh, Australia's highest ranked uh, Kung Fu um, expert, but his Sifu is a Shaolin monk. And um, so they've, uh, he's, he came over to um, Australia from China and uh, was one of the, um, took on two disciples, of which one of my, my Sifu was one of the, uh, one of the disciples. So uh, I've had my Sifu, had my Kung Fu lesson this morning, so feeling quite uh, energized and strong. So um, what we might do is, um, if everyone can stand up, we'll practice our Kung Fu. Okay, now, what I'd like you to do, this is the first exercise, because uh, in Kung Fu you have to strengthen your knuckles. So you have to strengthen your knuckles. So I'll, uh, I'll do it the first time, and then uh, you can all practice, okay? So we have to get in. <laughs> so can everyone see? Okay, so if you just come around the front, you can see. And if you've just got to hold this for about five minutes. <laughs> no, we don't have to do that. <laughs> Okay, we have, this is our, uh, this is a basic Kung Fu stance. It's uh, called a, um, kind of a, in other forms, it's called a, a, a horseshoe stance. So if you can get in this stance. And this is actually the, this, um, in martial arts, the, um, this actually has nothing to do with CSR, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> but the, the basis of uh, Kung Fu or any martial arts is, is a stance, strong stance. So, um, so this is actually how you stand. So. And we'll just, uh, so we'll go like this, and then we'll put our arms like this, and we'll practice our punching, okay? Everyone ready? Okay, ready? <laughs> okay, now we'll practice our kicks now. The people in the... F <laughs> Actually, no, we won't do anymore. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that. We all feel a bit energised now. Thank you. Okay, what I'd like you to do is, um, we're going to work with a partner. So you have to work with a partner. So what I'd like you to do is, um, everyone needs a partner. So if you um, haven't got a partner, um, please uh, get together. Say hello to someone, and you'll just need a partner. So you need a pa uh, partner, and you'll need a, one of, one of, one of um, the two of you will need a pen and a piece of paper.
Hello. Hello. I'm Ken. You're just looking at me with a sort of strange look. But... Yes. Um, you'll actually have to work closely together. So you'll have to actually um, kind of uh, be at least within, uh, you know, some proximity to one another. Okay. Has everyone got a partner? What I'd like you to do is, um, has anyone got a mobile phone? Can I have your mobile phone? Okay, thank you. Sorry, and this is yours? Andrew. Andrew, Andrew just give me his mobile phone. Now, has anyone got a hammer? No. No, we won't do that trick. No, that's right. What I'd like you to do is, um, with your partner, you both contribute, but only one person writes it down. Yeah, writes down the responses, but you both contribute. Okay? Here's the exercise. How many different uses can you think of for a mobile phone in the next 60 seconds? How many different uses can you think of for a mobile phone in the next 60 seconds? Ready, set, go. I'm a my fit. We do have colourful fighting. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah, that'll be. Uh, I'll give you a signal if I think of it, yeah. Okay. Okay, ten, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Okay, can you add them up? My company's called the Idea Centre, by the way, so I just I have to put in a small plug for the Idea Centre. Okay, um, uh, more than five? Okay, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen. Okay, you guys, how many? Fifteen? Fifteen. Okay, can you, um, can you read them out? Calculator, phone, doorstop, timer, done. Okay, do you want me to read? Oh, can I read them? Okay. Um, uh, make love. Um, <laughs> what are the two of you? You just met. Uh, <laughs> three days ago. Oh, the three days ago. Okay. <laughs> That's right. What took you so long? <laughs> Sorry. Calculator, phone, uh, doorstop, timer, dumbbell, is that right? Yeah, excellent, well done. Uh, plug, uh, juggling toy, vibrator, I knew, yes, yeah, see, yes, that's right, yes. Games, artwork, event, web browser, uh, a balance tool, toy, musical player, is that right? Excellent, well done, thank you, congratulations. And there was someone over here that was 15 or something, can I, is that right? Okay. Making love. At this, it seems to be kind of emergency help. Communi uh, what's it? Communication tool, um, and some others. Thank you. Okay. It's actually very. Uh, I couldn't read the writing. Sorry, quickly. Okay. What I'd like you to do. Thanks for that. Is um, we're going to do the same exercise again. The same exercise again. How many different uses can you think of for a mobile phone? Yeah. What I'd like you to do that now, before you do that, is just, um, between you, is just to think of an animal or insect and just write it down. Just one. One animal or insect. Just write it down. An animal or an insect. An animal or an insect. Okay. So, sorry? Okay, so who have we got here? What, what have we got? An ant. An ant, yes. Koala, yes. A giraffe, okay. Oh, the three of you together. Okay, right, yes. Then. Parrot. Parrot, okay, excellent. Zebra. Zebra, okay. All right, everyone, excellent. What I'd like you to do, after this, um, uh, at the end of the session, I'll do an analysis of the, um, the animal that you selected and the, your personality type. No, I'm not going to do that. That has nothing to do with, no, we just made that. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is, with the animal or insect that you selected, yeah, we're going to do the same exercise again. How many different uses can you think of for a phone in the next 60 seconds? Okay. You can't use any of the words you've written down. Can't use any of those words. You can't use any of the words that you've just heard. Okay, can't use any of those. But what I'd like you to do is, how many different uses can you think of for a mobile phone as viewed through the prism of the animal or insect that you've just become? 
Yeah? So, how does an ant look at a mobile phone? What possible uses could an ant have for a mobile phone? Yeah? So we got it? Okay, 60 seconds, away we go. Okay, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, stop. X, if you add them up. If you add them up. Okay, who had more the second time they did the exercise than the first time? Yep, okay, excellent. Um, can you uh, read them out? A big, strong voice. Uh, what animal or insect were you? Uh, we were a cockroach. Right, <laughs> cockroach, yes. They're the name of, of a band, of course, weren't they? They're, they're pretty wiggles. What are they called, the cockroaches or something? Yeah. Yes. We, we thought that it would be good for, like, mountain, we like it was mountain walking. Mountain walking, yes. Um, an obstacle. Obstacle. A toy. Toy. Uh, something to sunbake on. Yes, something to sunbake on, uh, yes. An exercise vehicle. Yes, yes, exercise vehicle. Uh, launching pad. Launching pad. Uh, shelter. Shelter. Defence for, like, hiding. Right, you really got into the, you know, the, the cockroach. This is really a... Hiding place. Hiding place, yes. Uh, for warmth, yes, excellent. Um, and also, if it was turned on the noise to scare predators. Oh, yes, yes. Or maybe you tracked other cockroaches. Yes, yes, okay. And like a love cockroach hotel. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else have more? Yes, at the back, David. Sorry. Oh, no. Oh, what were you doing? There's something going on here. Yes. Some were similar and some not. We got warmth, we got sleep, we got hide, and so we thought the cockroach might make very short calls. <laughs> But also get exercise by crawling it under and lifting it up. And yes. if desperate could eat it, perhaps. And if the vibrators on it could get a massage and it could probably find some crumbs in the thing. And if really desperate in two or three million years' time, phone home. Oh, yes. Fantastic. If it got lost. Okay. One more. Anyone have about the same number? Okay. Sorry. Were you by yourself? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, were you together? Oh, right. Okay. What animal insect were you guys? Or a parrot. Parrot, yes. Uh, chew, eat it, peck it, perch on it, poo on it, sleep on it, roost, nest, talk to it, move it, play with it, jump on it, climb on it, sharpen beat. Fantastic. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Well done. I, um, I put it... I'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, let's have a look at the two lists. So if you look at the two lists, the first time we did the exercise and the second time we did the exercise, yeah? What can you tell me? Are they similar? They're quite different. Most people are quite different. Second one was more interesting. Oh, okay. You found it a bit harder? Yeah. Most people um, tend not to uh, have, have a reduced number. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, no. Um, this, most people, the second time they do the exercise, typically have um, a smaller number of responses than the first time. Yeah. Okay. Would we agree that the second time we did the exercise is, uh, is probably a bit more playful? It's certainly filled with more possibilities. Yeah? Once you've done this exercise, you can never view a mobile phone quite the same again. <laughs> Think of all those cockroaches, that's right, yes, that's right. <laughs> Would we agree, possibly, that the second time we do the exercise, it's actually um, filled with more imagination? It's more creative. Yeah? And often, maybe more creative by a power of, in the cockroach case, you know, by a power of ten. But an interesting thing happened. I didn't change the phone. Andrew's phone just sat there. I didn't change the task. How many different uses can you think of from a mobile phone? I didn't change the time limit. I didn't change your partner. I didn't change the environment. And yet in 60 seconds, you were more creative perhaps by a power of 10. Magic. Imagine being able to un unlock that to solve all the CSR problems, so to take advantage of all the opportunities in CSR. Imagine being able to do that on demand. Imagine being able to, you know, that everyone could do that every day. But you just did it, 60 seconds. Now, the secret of creative thinking is to now think cockroach. That's a, that's a, new, that's a new way of thinking. What did I shift? What did I change? The perspective, yeah, the perspective. We just changed the way we looked at it. So if we look at a problem like this, if we can just look at a problem or a situation like this, we open ourselves up to new possibilities, new ways of solving it, new ways of, um, you know, uh, new solutions. 
Because the problem solving process is about um, opening up and closing down, this constant dance between opening up and closing down, opening yourselves up to new possibilities, new perspectives, new ways of looking at things, but then saying, is it on, is it on budget, is it on strategy, do we have resources, etc. Yeah. So the test... Can everyone see? Yeah. Fine. Okay. Different pen. This is called... I've got terrible writing. Yeah? I'm not changing it. I'm just telling you I've got terrible writing. <laughs> convergent thinking. Convergent thinking. This is what we're taught to... How we're taught to think. This is our education system, our business school system, our IQ measures, our convergent thinking. How many different uses, you know, how many different responses can you... Um, uh, for example, multiple choice, what's the correct answer? You take a whole bunch of information and you solve a problem. It's a really powerful thinking system. Yeah? In marketing, for example, um, where my background is in marketing, you take a whole bunch of information, you might do a SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and key issues and problems. Yeah? It's actually not a great system to create new ideas. So, the creative problem solving process is about opening up and then closing down, opening up and closing down. And that's um, our divergent thinking. Divergent thinking, opening up, closing down. We need both. You guys are wonderful at this, but you've just proven to yourself that you can actually be good at this. So if the right tools, the right training, the right encouragement, the right culture, um, we can all become better at this. And we need this, I think, to take advantage of the opportunities in CSR. I don't think we can get through it from here. In the very first presentation by Ray, he talked about we need a new way of thinking. And this is a kind of a new way of thinking. Yeah, does that all make sense? Okay, open up, close down. Open up, close down. Okay. All right, what I'd like you to do now is, um, this is a very important exercise. Um, with your partner, again, what we need to do is if you can stand up and turn around and look at your partner. You're not playing. You can play. You can play. If you've got if you've got three, that's okay. If you've got three, that's okay. What I'd like you to do is um, now you have, it's very important. Now you turn around, look at them straight in the eye, and um, give them a big cuddle. Now. Now, Anne-Marie, I, I just won $10 from Anne-Marie because she said, I bet you you can't get everyone cuddling, you know, within the first five minutes. <laughs> okay, what I'd like you to do is, um, here's the exercise. Um, uh, Andrew? Andrew, Andrew. Wait, did I give the phone back? Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay, good. Just in case. No, that's right. Andrew is going to, with his partner, he's going to say a word. So Andrew will say any word. And. And. Andrew's partner... Whose name? Alicia. Alicia will say a completely unrelated word. Unrelated word to ant. Burn. Good, okay. Now you have to say a completely unrelated word to burn. Carpet. Carpet, okay. So everyone got the exercise? Really simple. One person says a word, the other person has to say a completely unrelated word. The moment you hesitate, stop and start again. If you repeat a word, stop and start again. Or if you say a related word, stop and start again. Yeah? Everyone got it? Okay, go. <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. If you uh, mind, grab, grab a seat. If you grab a seat, thank you. <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. Okay, who, um, who found that exercise slightly difficult? Yeah, most, most people, yes. Why is that, do you think? Yes, that's right. It's, um, we naturally want to make a connection. You know, it's the way we communicate, it's the way we socialise, the way we learn. You know, if I said good morning and then you started talking about a submarine, then <laughs> we could, it'd be hard to have a conversation. Yeah? Um, but this also, this is de Bono's insight. There's uh, Edward de Bono. And his insight is that, um, uh, this is my way of, 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 of articulating his insight. His insight is that our mind acts like a patterning system like a patterning system. So that when information comes in, 
the information, we self-organise the information into an existing pattern. So when you say dog, we self-organise that information into a, an existing dog pattern. And as you've just experienced, it's actually quite hard to get out of that pattern. It's quite hard to break that pattern. Yeah. Who had a strategy to kind of break the pattern of the word that they were using, the other person was using? Yes. I found rhyme. Rhyming. Okay. Well, give, can uh, give us an example? That was clever. Procrastination. Oh, fantastic. Um, ah, excellent. Fantastic. I love it. Great. Not usually that's a ah, that's a pattern. Yeah. Okay. Notice the paradox. Notice the paradox. To escape a pattern, we often have to create new patterns. Yep. We tried to, well, I tried to do whatever I could see, but I think she was doing the same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A lot of people just, you know, you look around the room. Again, it's the same sort of thing. In a sense, you're kind of breaking, trying to break your own pattern. Yes. I was just going to say, like, what, um, some of the words were essentially not related. Yep. They were related. Yes. So, for instance, you know, David said light bulb, I said insect, I immediately thought that's related because last time I looked at a light bulb was an insect. Yes, okay, yes. Yeah. So that's okay. Yes, good, excellent, fantastic. Patterning, patterning is also about, um, if you think about, um, this is my kind of extension of his work, I think organisations are just examples of big patterns. In fact, if you think about your business or in the organisation you work in, it's, it's really just a, an, an organisation is a kind of living pattern. And if you think about an organisation as a living pattern, you know, it has, what are some examples of a, of a pattern in an organisation? Structure, excellent. Processes, pr procedures, policy, are just patterns. And that's actually why it's actually quite difficult for organisations to do things differently and to be innovative because, if you like, they're trapped by their own patterns. Now, patterns are very good in terms of efficiency. You know, it would be difficult every morning if you woke up and then said, oh, God, I've got to create a completely new and original, fresh way to drive to work. It would drive you nuts. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with it in terms of it's efficient, but if the environment changes and you want to change and you want to be more creative, more inventive, um, it can trap you because the patterns over time become rigid and fixed. Yeah? We also have personal patterns, you know, a habit, a routine. Take examples of personal patterns that we need to deliberately try and break. One guy in my research um, had a theory of growing old, and his theory of um, staying young, if you like, in mind and spirit as he grew old, was to do one uncomfortable thing every day, which is a really interesting idea. So it didn't have to be a big thing, just one small uncomfortable thing every day. It could be talking to a new person, you know. I was, um, when I started to learn Kung Fu, this is bizarre, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, a, a, a middle-aged man who's, uh, you know, the whole idea of kind of starting up Kung Fu, but I drove past it about ten times, and I walked past it, and wandered in, and then wandered out again, and it was just bizarre, I was only learning how to Kung Fu, but... Um, so um, as, as we get older, we kind of, uh, sometimes we stick more and more close to our comfort zones, and we need to sort of move out of our comfort zones, so... Uh, Okay, so we need to break patterns and we need to find ways to break patterns and shift our perspective. Because our patterns, if you like, and our patterns are based on our values and our assumptions and our experiences, we have to find ways to shift that. Okay, so let's learn some um, tools to help us do that. Um, what I'd like you to do is, um, in the next two minutes, um, write down, at least uh, with your partner, um, one problem or one opportunity or one issue around CSR. So if you go back to your work um, on Monday, what's a, what's, a, what's a problem, what's an opportunity, or what's an issue around CSR? It doesn't matter what it is, at least one. It could be, think of, see if you can um, write down five. You've got to write down five in the next two minutes. Okay, go. Sorry? No, no, just with your business. Yeah, or your organisation. So this is within your organisation. So within your organisation, your role. What's a... Um, uh, oh, five in total. Yeah, so five in total. It could be five problems or it could be two problems and three opportunities or it could be two problems, two opportunities and one issue or whatever. Five in two minutes, ready, set, go. We had 30 seconds.
Okay, that's enough. Has everyone got at least three? Has everyone got at least three? Okay, what I'd like you to do is, um, I want you to take the third problem or third opportunity. So that's the one we're going to concentrate on right now. Yeah? Okay, the third one. Here's, how we, um, here's one tool. What I'd like you to do is in the next... Uh, In the, next, in the next two minutes, this is an extension of mind mapping, if anyone's done mind mapping. Mind mapping just means you, whenever thoughts pop in your head, you put them in bubbles and around a, it's got a core problem. So what I'd like you to do is to put your, the problem in the middle of the page, yeah? So pick the third one and put the problem in the middle of the page. The third one. Here's the problem or opportunity, yep. What I'd like you to do now is to, um, I want you to develop BAU, business as usual. This, uh, this, is a, this is the way we would normally solve the problem. This is a continuation of how we would normally solve the problem. Business as usual, yeah? I want five business as usual um, ways of solving the problem, yeah? And then I want at least um, two different ways of solving the problem. And then I want one at least radical way of solving the problem. So when I, when, um, in terms of trying to find solutions, it's just, if you've got a business as usual, it's just literally going, you know, blah, blah, maybe we can do this, maybe we can do that, maybe we can do that. It's just get the stuff down very quickly. That's the essence of this. But notice we're not saying, I'm just not saying five solutions. I want, these are qualitatively different. Five business as usual ways of solving the problem, at least two different ways, and one, one big radical way of solving the problem. Okay, ready, go. Okay, that's it. All right, what I'd like to do, a really simple tool. Business as usual, different, radical. Okay, it's a very, very powerful tool. Um, so whenever you're faced with a problem, um, you can either do it in this format or you can draw a triangle and always say, what's a usual way of solving this problem? What's a different way of solving this problem? And what's a radical way of solving this problem? A real left field way. Now, the benefit of this process is that um, you're asking for different types of ideas rather than just um, the same sorts of ideas. It's also, um, if I'm working with someone and I say to them, look, um, I want a, a radical idea, what am I asking that, what am I doing? What am I giving that person? Excellent, fantastic. I'm giving permission for you to be creative. I'm being giving permission for you to give me a left field idea, yeah? I'm also creating an expectation. The higher we can, we have, the, the more we can raise the expectations in terms of our own creativity and our own imagination, our actually, you'll be amazed by your own results. Demand high, higher and better, stronger, more original ideas. Now the other good thing is, if you've got business as usual and you're presenting to someone, here's one way of presenting to. I'm going to present to Sorry. David. David. David's my boss. Now David's kind of, I've got a, a, a new idea around CSR, I've been playing around with David, I've got a fantastic, it's big, radical idea, it's original, it's never been tried before, and here's my idea. Okay, how do you feel? It's just okay, you know, you've just said here's my idea, I'm like, okay, it's an idea, so. Okay, but for, and it, it, it is just an idea, but for most managers, I'll be saying, you know, I'm not sure about this, um, has it been done before, sounds risky, um, have you got any evidence that it might work? What if it doesn't work? I've got a mortgage, I've got kids. This might require a lot of investment, et cetera, et cetera. And so the chances of you getting that idea accepted are actually is not very much, yeah? As opposed to if I say to David, that was David, sorry? Yeah. David, David um, here's a problem that you gave me. Thank you very much for that. Um, here's a way we'd normally solve the problem. Here it is. And this works well. Here's a different way, but I've just for a bit of fun, I've explored a radical way. Now, I'm giving David choice. In, in bringing David a radical one, he can always come back, yeah? So, there's a paradox. I increase my chances dramatically of having the radical idea um, accepted by, by giving the safe options first, yeah? This is business as usual, different radical, yeah? This is a really good way in terms of brainstorming as well. One of the things I ask um, groups to do, if you've got a problem, get a diverse group together because we want people that see the world differently from you. You want people that are close to the problem and you want people that are outside the problem because they've got different perspectives. And um, have it short, no more than 40 minutes. Give them the problem, 
24 hours, 48 hours beforehand, and ask them to come along with three ideas. Say to their group, hey, and everyone work by themselves, work from the individual up. Ask if you've got 10 people, ask everyone in the group to come along with three ideas. In the first two minutes, if everyone brings three ideas and we've got 10 people, for the first two minutes, we've got 30 ideas. See, it's a much more powerful system. Or better still, ask them to bring along business as usual idea, a different idea, and a radical idea. I think the individual can be more creative than the group. It's an interesting idea. Because we're taught now, group work, teams, collaboration. I think the individual can be far more creative than the group. The group, I think, is better at enhancing ideas, growing ideas, evaluating ideas, applying ideas, implementing ideas. But the individual, this great spark of individual creativity is still needed. So we need to um, find ways to tap into that. So in all my exercises with um, groups, if we're working as a group, I always work from the individual up to the partner, up to the group. Because we know from our patterning work, if I'm the boss, I come in and say, look, um, here's the problem. Now, instantly, the way I, how I frame the problem instantly sets off a pattern. Then I say, look, I'm really open to new ideas. I absolutely want new ideas. But look, just to get things started, here are some of my ideas. Now, the moment I give you an idea, I instantly frame and form a pattern for the group, which is really hard to escape. So you have the dominant people, the most extroverted people, the people, the boss. Um, it's really hard to escape from. So everyone, um, everyone puts up their ideas. They walk into the brainstorming session. Everyone puts up their ideas. Should they sign it and say, this is Ken's idea? What do you think? Yep. Um, I would say no, because the thing is, to get social cohesion, Good. ownership needs to be all day. Yes, OK. OK, now I've got the notion of it's about social um, cohesion. The other reason for me is that, um, my suggestion why you don't put um, people's name on it is because if I'm the boss, I put up my ideas and I sign Ken Hudson, you know, subconsciously boss. Everyone walks past my ideas, either consciously or subconsciously, and says, oh, great idea. Oh, fantastic, Ken. Oh, my goodness. How do you do it? <laughs> oh. Yes? Okay, that's true, but I like the idea just to stand on its own merits, regardless of where it comes from. The idea is the hero, not the person. Because you frame, the way we look at ideas, um, instantly framed by the person. Yeah. How are we going for time, just as an aside? Um, D? Uh, ten minutes to go. Okay, very quickly. What I'd like you to do is, um, oh, we're going to learn two more tools, um, very quickly. Um, we, uh, what I'd like you to do is um, select the second problem. Select the second problem or opportunity or issue with your person. And what I'd like you to do is um, we need, everyone needs to stand up and everyone will need a pen and a piece of paper. Okay, very quickly, if we can all stand up. No. Okay, that's a good point, but we're actually going to do, do a wrap-up after this where we might actually um, put up some of those problems and some good... Uh, yeah, good. Okay. The ladies... Um, sorry, uh, Sarah? Sarah's just made a suggestion which um, uh, I think is not a very good suggestion. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm building an idea environment where ideas are open to other newer perspectives. No, I, I'm only... Sarah has come up with a wonderful idea which said, um, let's start, um, why don't we start sharing the ideas because you no doubt would have come up with great ideas and it'd be good if everyone could um, uh, benefit from that. So um, we might do that, which is, we were talking about doing that um, after this, which we're going to put them up. Yeah. So we're doing that after this session. So thank you, Sarah. Okay, here's the exercise. What I'd like you to do is, um, um, has everyone got the problem that they're grappling with? Yeah? What I'd like you to do is, I just want you, um, everyone has a pen and a piece of paper, I just want you to concentrate on your breathing. Really simple idea. Just says, you know, big breath. <sighs> Concentrate on your breath. And at the end of that breath, I want you to solve the problem. And then the other person will record, and you'll tell the other person. Yeah? The other person will write it down. Okay, when you've, when you've actually written that down, the other person will, it'll be the other person's turn. They'll just... <sighs> deep breath. 
And then they'll so try and solve the problem. Yeah? Has everyone got it? Really simple. The main thing is whatever you do, don't just concentrate on your breathing. Just focus on your breathing. And at the end of the breath, whatever pops into your head, just get it out. Okay? Go. Okay, has everyone had a go? Yeah, everyone had a go? Okay. What I'd like you to do is, um, if we were evaluating this idea, here's another way of evaluating this idea. Um, typically, we th we're taught to think in twos. Good, bad, right, wrong, yes, no, pass, fail. Yeah? If you add simply a third column, and so you might say, these are ideas that we accept. These are ideas that are not quite right. And these are just interesting ideas. Yeah? These are unexpected ideas, surprising ideas. Because we live in a world of um, twos, we always want to put ideas um, either in here and here. But invariably, when I run a session, at the end of the day, the best ideas have always come from something that was just in this column. So I get people to evaluate. Um, as soon as we do an exercise, I get people to evaluate it. I don't leave evaluation to the end. While we run out of time, we have too many ideas. And in this way, if you can just, if we were doing that exercise, I'd ask people to evaluate it straight away and say, what, what are some ideas that are on budget, on strategy that make sense? Yep, and we'd have a couple of them, and then we'd have some ideas that are not quite right. And then I'd say, what are some interesting ideas? And then you just park the interesting ideas and then say, well, let's concentrate on the interesting ideas, and how do we get the interesting ideas over to this column? Yeah, it's a much more powerful way. Something unexpected, surprising. Or another one, another good column here is just to write scary. These are scary ideas. Because the great thing happens, when the, if you capture the scary ideas, the more you work with them, the more you try and get them over there, suddenly they don't become so scary after all. Yeah? OK, one more tool. Um, yeah, we can sit down. Thank you. Sorry. One more tool. Here's... Um, I heard people all the time say, um, we need some, think, of, uh, think outside the box, think outside the square. Yeah? And I thought that was a great metaphor for actually how our mindset works because you know the way we looked at a mobile phone? We were, it was actually framed by our own experiences of values and beliefs. And that traps us. That traps us. So what I get people to do is to say, this is my A, B, C, E box. So this is my kind of, it's my mindset box. I was, I tried desperately for D, but I couldn't, I, this is as close as I got. <laughs> so what we do here is we put down all the assumptions around the problem. What are our assumptions around a problem? problem? Yeah? What are our beliefs? What are the conventions? The conventions are the, like the rules of the game. The rules of the game that everyone follows, what everyone else does. The industry conventions, the category conventions. And then E are, what are our, our own experiences in using this product or service or our experiences in solving this problem? And then you actually write them all down. And then you actually take one of them or you take all of them or a section of them and actually turn them on the head, flip them over. And if you, because if you don't do that, this, this is, all these assumptions, conventions, beliefs and experience limit our solutions to a problem. So if we don't make them explicit, we can only create ideas within this box. I'll give you a practical example. And, um, but if we flip an assumption on its head, a convention on its head, a belief, we can expand our opportunity box in terms of ideas. Here's a practical example. Now, um, I was working with a garbage bag brand. It doesn't sound very exciting, but it was a garbage bag brand. And um, in Melbourne, this is a real case study, they were number three in the marketplace and they were facing um, competition from two big multinationals. So this was an Australian brand. I said, tell me about the business. And they said, it's um, not a very good business. It's, uh, we don't make as much money. We don't have um, as much advertising dollars nor retailer support. We're number three. We compete on price. Not a great future. And I said, well, tell me about garbage bags. Now, um, Andrew, Andrew, he's the uh, marketing director. And Andrew, tell me about garbage bags, about the garbage bags experience with customers and garbage bags generally. Yeah. And Andrew says, oh, rubbish. <laughs> That's right. This whole hour, or just the garbage bags? I said. Andrew says, 
This is a low involvement, low interest category. Everyone knows that. So, Andrew, tell me about garbage bags. Certainly not very interesting. Okay, it's low interest, low involvement category. Everyone knows that. Now, he's uh, talking to the finance director, Peter. Peter, tell me about garbage bags. Uh, I don't match much. Low interest, Bank. low involvement category. Low involvement. Excellent, thank you. And uh, David, to tell me about uh, garbage bags. And Gabe, go, David is the managing director. Low interest, low involvement category. Yes. Yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> now, David's talking to Andrew, who says, tell me about garbage bags, low interest, low involvement category. Here's, here's it from Andrew, here's it from Fred, here's it from Julie. Before you know it, they're all, everyone believes it's the truth. Because every time they hear it, every, they say it's low interest, not very interesting. Then they go to um, research, and customers say what? Not very interesting. Yeah? So, belief system is low interest, low involvement. It's a belief system. Yeah? Can't challenge it because it's a belief system. I come in and said, because I'm picking up the language, and you say, do you realise you're saying this? They said, no. And I said, well, let's spend the next two minutes. How can we make garbage bags interesting? Any ideas? How do we make garbage bags interesting? Brighter colours. Biodegradable. Smell good, excellent. In fact, that's exactly what they've done. So now they've actually brought out, as a result of this um, one specific workshop, which um, made them a hell of a lot of money, which means I didn't charge enough in my workshop, <laughs> um, uh, deodorising garbage bags. Deodorising garbage bags. It's simply because they challenged the notion that by garbage bags, could be, we could make them in more interesting. If you think of um, Band-Aids, who would have thought Band-Aids you could make more interesting? You know, now there's brightly coloured ones. If you now think of um, toothbrushes, toothpaste. So my view is this. If you want to change the marketplace, if you want to make an indent in the marketplace, you actually have to start with your mindset. It's actually mindset first, then marketplace. We're taught always the opposite. We've got to look at the marketplace and we've got to, you know... But if you look at the marketplace with a closed mindset, with a self-limiting mindset like we all have, you, can't, you don't see opportunities. You're restricted by your own self-limiting beliefs, assumptions, values, and experiences. This is a great exercise to do with a group. Because you have a problem, you get everyone to do their own mindset box, and then you get together and say, what are your assumptions, beliefs? And actually, in using this tool, it doesn't matter, quite frankly, if it, if it goes in an assumption, belief, this is a more rational, this is a more emotional, an experience of convention. It actually doesn't matter. Don't get hung up on that. The important thing is just to get it out. If you get it out, then you can overturn it. I did the same exercise with a big health insurance company and they did the same thing and it was around, um, and one of their big belief systems was that, uh, uh, that health insurance is for, um, uh, is for sick people, makes perfect sense, yep. And, um, and when, they when they sort of did all this stuff, they realised they knew nothing about um, offering insurance to healthy people. So now it's actually, we've, we're developing a whole bunch of new products and services for healthy people. So if you make that explicit, then you can challenge it, then you can overturn it. Again, to use the garbage bag experience, the big assumption for garbage bags is what? You put garbage in it. Yeah? Who's ever used a garbage bag for something other than putting garbage in? Absolutely, raincoat. So now we're actually bringing out um, the house moving bag. Now we're bringing out the reinforced house storage bag. Why? Because that's how people use it. There's an assumption. We're challenging the assumption. Does that make sense? So just getting this stuff down makes you can rapidly expand, um, rapidly expand uh, um, an idea. I want to do, I've only got three minutes, three minutes left, so I want to do one quick exercise. This is, um, this is based on my model of... Uh, is anyone a Trekkie? This dates me a bit. Star Trek, if... If you actually don't know what Star Trek is, then um, Very sad. Very sad. <laughs> in Star Trek science six fiction series, who was a rational, logical, analytical one? Spock. He's a Vulcan with funny ears. He was a rational one. He was in a dynamic tension with whom? Bones. He was a doctor. He operated on his emotions. Yeah? And then over, overlooking all those was uh, Captain Kirk, and he operated... He made an imaginative leap. Yeah? And in my, one of my models of creativity and innovation is, where do you think most organisations live? 
they're here. They're, sp they're Spock-like. Rational, objective, analytical, cost-benefit, efficient, yeah. Unless you work for not-for-profit, actually, excellent point. And the interesting thing, the more, more profit guys, they, they spend all their time lecturing you on trying to be more like Spock. Whereas I actually think that they actually can learn a lot more by being more Kirk-like and being more, more um, passionate. And that's around, this is around passions, emotions, but it's around fear and insecurity. This is about EQ stuff, this way. So you need all three. You need them in a sort of dynamic tension. On an individual level, our rational mind dominates. So we've got to quieten it. That's why the breathing exercise is interesting, because you distract people, and you just get people to concentrate on the idea. So what I'd like to do is we're going to do a very quick exercise, and I'd like um, this group here, so your group one, if you could, wouldn't mind standing up, and if you could just wander over there. Okay, and you're competing against um, the group behind. Here's the exercise. Has anyone got a problem that they've been grappling with? So, you guys, ready? Up, up. Um, okay, so what I'd like you to do is, um, if you stand um, just here, stand here, and the other group, if you're just here, facing these guys, if you spread out, can everyone see? If you can't see, you have to move up a bit, just to, so you can see this exercise, and can you record the results? Thanks. Okay. Here's the exercise. This is a great exercise to do with the group. Um, this is an imagination ball. The moment you get this imagination ball, you can't help but get a great idea. It's just, you can't help it. So here's where we start. Good catch. Who's, um, who's got an idea that grappling with? Anyone got an idea they're grappling with? Anyone got an idea they're grappling with? Time. Time. What do you mean? Lack of time. Lack of time. Okay, so lack of time to do, uh, to do your work. On a personal level? Okay. Okay, we all have, we're all lacking time to do all that work, yeah? What I'd like you to do is, um, very quickly, um, you've got to solve that problem, yeah? If you just come over a bit over here. And you've got to throw, once you've solved the problem, you've got to add one solution, you've got to throw it to anyone over here, if you could just come a bit over here. Throw it to anyone over here, yeah? They've got to catch it and immediately solve the problem, add to an idea or solve the original problem and throw it back to anyone over here. If you drop the ball, you sit down. If it's a bad throw, you sit down. So, have we got the exercise? Okay, go. Um, destroy all clocks and. Excellent, destroy all clocks, fantastic. Okay, throw it to anyone over there. Yes. Um, get to work earlier. Get to work earlier, yes. Compulsory email, blackout for an hour a day. Good, compulsory email, blackout. Oh, good, go! Oh, no, sorry. You're out. I'm sorry. No, you're out. You've got to add something. I will give you one more chance. All right, Jesse. <laughs> okay. All right, quickly. Just forget about it. Just forget about it. Okay. Business provide lunch for everybody so they can stay working. Oh, yes. Okay, now we've got to um, throw right handed and catch right handed. You've got to solve the problem. You've got to solve the problem. Okay. Oh, good catch. There's two hands. You're out. No, oh, sorry. It's tough. It's tough here. Sorry, you're out. Yep. Um, meditate longer. Yes, okay. Oh, oh, okay. All right, last go. Last go. Look at the clouds and imagine it's all going away. Okay, all right. All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much for that, if you can just sit around. So any exercise you can do to quieten your sort of rational mind, um, the better. And I've run out of time, so um, uh, did you... Right-handed catch. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we've run out of time. Um, any two-minute questions? I've, I've got maybe a minute to answer questions, I guess. Yes, thank you. I'm just wondering if British American Tobacco can ever become a sustainable company. That's a good, that's, that's a tough question. Um, do you work for them? Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure, I don't know. Um, they rang me up, actually strange enough, a few weeks ago to do some work for them. And, but uh, it just, I couldn't. <laughs> 
So, uh, but you know, I, I haven't found anything that these these tools can't be applied to. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> That's right. Yes, that's right. Okay, last minute question. I was just going to say, has that been helpful for you to sort of shift your thinking? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, on that note, Ken, you've given us a, a great contribution on okay. Wednesday and again today. Thank you so much for your participation. That's right, Mark. Now, we're not quite over yet, and there's a few housekeeping things, and we want to do some wrapping up. What I might do is particularly ask the international speakers who are still here, if you'd like to perhaps come to the front. Uh, I know some of you um, have been thinking about, you know, where things might be able to go, and I've been posing questions to people, Sharon, um, in terms of where things might be able to go from here. And I'll come to that in a moment. I'd like to just get some of the formalities out of the way first. One of the formalities is, in fact, some prize draws that we have. And, in fact, Lord Hastings, perfect that you've sat there. Would you like to, um, to pull a card out, please? The first card, thanks to Christopher Wainwright down here. Christopher works for a, a new e-newsletter. Uh, well, it's actually in hard copy and... Um, it's, anyway, it's a newsletter. It's a CSR newsletter. It's put out by our community in Deloitte. And... The first person that is drawn out here is going to win an annual subscription, which is worth $585. And the winner is... Oh, and the winner is Diana Borgmeiger, I think it is, from Konica Minolta. Is she still here? No? OK, well, that's fine. We can make contact with her. It was two, wasn't it, Chris? So, a second one? Pressure. Responsibility. Here it comes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I think she's had to drive back to Canberra. It's Jeanette Hennessy Wright from Department of Employment and Workplace Relations. I'm sure she's gone. Yeah. Terrific. Well, look, that's great. So they're going to get subscriptions to um, our, our business community intelligence. We have one more prize. Thank you, Lord Hastings. And it is going to be for some beautiful oils to burn. How appropriate after... We've had group hugs, we've had all sorts of things today. Uh, this is from eBar. Most of you have been washing your hands with their product, particularly in the ladies' bathrooms. Anyone who's had a bit of a massage with Gary's um, had the products used on them, and I know that they've been sampled out there. All beautiful products, thanks to Joe Costello. Merle Singer. Is Merle still here? No? OK, she's from Dimension Data, so... Um, Fantastic. We'll have to get these prizes to Ooh, these nice. particular people. Now, um, questionnaires. Very, very important. Could I ask you all now to actually take your pens to spend two minutes to fill out that questionnaire? If you don't, in that two minutes, if you're not complete, we'll ask you to finish it afterwards. We are going to give away a magnum of red wine thanks to David Morrissey at ARTD. They're going to analyse these and to whoever is given the most constrict, uh, constructive criticism, <laughs> ideas, hopefully it's not too constrictive. Some people have been constrictive with their time and have quickly added some things and that's all helpful. But the more detail you can give us, the better. So two minutes to actually complete those. OK. I know half of you are still going, but I'll get you to complete those when we've actually finished, if you don't mind. What I'd like to go through right now is we'd like to sort of summarise part of what we've learned. And I'd like to, to sort of start uh, with a couple of things. Firstly, I have learnt that you can actually take a seed, an idea, and fertilise it over time, nurture it, love it and give birth to something that's pretty special. <laughs> so that's certainly one thing that I've learnt. And, and as part of that process, I thought it was ageing me. And uh, I just did my bio like, biological age, and I'm about six years younger than I thought, you know, than I actually am. So I was pretty thrilled with all of that. One really interesting thing I've learnt about running an event like this is when you run an event like this, particularly when you promote it on a global basis, you win the lottery in every country. 
I kid you not, I would get 10 emails a day telling me I've won the lottery. I've now won the lottery in Japan, in Spain, in South Africa, you name it. I've also been the most trusted person on the planet. I have been asked by every man and his dog all over the world to look after money in my bank account for them. <laughs> I am the most trusted person on the planet for running a CSR <laughs> summit. It has been extraordinary. So that's part of what I've learned about putting the event on. I've had to be in and out and I haven't really participated so much, but I've actually asked um, particularly our international speakers who've played a very major role in this particular forum to just maybe just a couple of comments each in terms of wrapping up what they think the key learnings have been and maybe where they think this forum can go, and it's something that I do want to open up to everybody that's here in terms of where we can go. But I would like to start um, with some of the internationals. I've been voted in to speak first. <laughs> um, I think my observation would be that there's, there's tremendous energy and passion around CSR that's come out from this group, and it's really kind of struck me. Um, and I think on that basis, it's an Im immensely powerful base to start. And for many of you, it's kind of different stages of the journey. But, but I think I, I've certainly been struck by the, over the overarching appetite to listen, to learn, um, to share amongst one another, and to really take that back and, and put it into action. So that would be my, my observation, which is a really positive one. Okay. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, I echo that. Um, two points I'd like to make. One is, it's been fantastic as an overseas speaker to be here and be part of this, this uh, event. But it's over to you guys. This is your country. This is your sustainability. It's your business. And um, <clears throat> one of the things that I've noticed is a lot of your institutions, the, um, the business groups, the special interest groups, just don't have this subject on their agenda. And it's up to you people, not us Brits here, it's up to you to talk to your HR institutes, your supply and purchasing institutes. We had earlier on today Robert Pease from uh, the newly um, set up Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply Australia. They need help. They are just starting off. They're going to have some tools and some training to take into organisations. It's people like you in the room that are going to actually help institutions like that get the subject of corporate responsibility and sustainability really on the agenda. That's the first thing I say. It's over to you. Secondly, in terms of the summit, I like to see a summit like this in Europe in future years of the Australian experts coming over and telling us your case studies you tell Michael, Sharon, Janet and David, this is what we're doing, you Brits. This is how we do it in Australia. Copy that. That's what I'd like to see. Thank you. Um, well, I suppose just one further point and then, then an observation. A further point being that given that everybody, I think, here has, has kind of swallowed in with the CSR case, over the last few days, and you're asking, well, how can you, can you force change on big companies? And I would just suggest that if any of you have any connections with the, four, the big audit firms, the, you, know, you know who I mean, the KPMGs and the Deloitte's and the Pricewaterhouses and the others, the audit firms have enormous influence with the companies that they audit. And if you can press regulators and auditors to press organizations to understand their governance duties, that has a remarkably powerful impact at board level uh, because those voices are heard with authority and conviction. So maybe that's just something that could become part of the significant uh, Australian CSR Summit 2006, which I'm happy to tell you the Australian government has committed to fund exclusively. <laughs> but you could also lobby away at your politicians. And I think just an observation, which uh, may be speaking on behalf of all of us from Britain, which is that Anne-Marie Huxley is a brilliant organiser. Oh, yes. And uh, we're immensely grateful to her for all the work she's done. One of my favorite books is uh, by an American called Malcolm Gladwell. You may have come across it called uh, Tipping Point, about how ideas and fashions spread. And it takes three 
types of people. It needs the mavens and the connectors and the salespeople. The mavens are the people who make uh, meaning, where just the rest of us see lots of disparate bits of information. And probably at some points during the last three days, you may have felt a little bit uh, as though you were in need of some mavens to make meaning of all the different inputs that uh, we've all been bombarded by. But the second category are the connectors, the people who are just naturally brilliant networkers. They just go into a room at a party and you happen to mention you're thinking of going to Bali for your holidays or something and you're dragged across the room straight away to meet somebody who's just come back from Bali and you're, you're talking away within moments and, and building up the, the information because of the power and just the skill of, of, of those sort of natural connectors. And the salespeople, of course, as the name implies, are people who can really take an idea and, and promote it. And if you're going to do one particular action point from today, I think it's thinking about who do you know in your own circle? It may be back in your own organization. It may be a client. It may be a next door neighbor. It may be your son or daughter's godparent or somebody that parent of one of your kids' um, friends at school or whatever it is. But one person that you are going to share some of the key nuggets with from, from this conference. So we start to get the multiplier effect going. Remember that Ray Anderson point about changing people's minds one at a time? Well, I'm not asking you to change thousands, but actually at least to make sure that by Monday evening you've shared this with at least one other person. I think in terms of potential follow-up, I think in terms of, of how and when the follow-up is done, that's a, an Australian decision. Um, what I would say is that um, one of the things you might think about um, as a fairly early step is looking at the technology of people like the World Bank Institute with their e-conferencing and thinking about whether actually it's quite a simple follow-up exercise after your very long Christmas, New Year holidays. Um, um, after that, you might do a kind of um, e-conference uh, over two, three days when anyone can log in and actually share some of the synthesizing which I'm sure many of the people who've been in the summit for the last three days will be doing naturally in terms of these are the key things that I got from Linda or from Ray or from whoever it was, which seems to really resonate with where we are at our stage of development in our organisation. And perhaps during an e-conference, which I certainly am sure all of us would be very happy to, to contribute to on, online, to see if we can stimulate the further development of, of our collective learning and the applicability of all these ideas here in a specifically Australian context. Okay, thank you, David. Ken, I didn't realise that you'd sort of stepped over there, and I don't know if you've taken your microphone off, but you've been a, a fairly major part for the last few days. Would you like to um, to talk about where you think maybe things can go, or just summarise your thoughts from the last few days? I was sleeping over here. I was, gonna say, I, I was just sort of having a nod okay. off. So, um, <laughs> it's a good idea. I um. My, 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 uh, my passion is uh, around ideas and, and, and I think that CSR are, um, the people that are interested in CSR, back to that model that I explained, have, have energy and passion and um, commitment and um, it strikes me that they also were wonderful at creating some of the case studies I heard were just fantastic um, case studies in terms of new ideas and using imagination. And it, uh, but you know, to live in a rational world where kind of rational business leaders live, um, you know, it has to be presented in a, in a kind of there has to be a sort of a rational business <coughs> case. So um, my learning is um, uh, ideas, a wonderful passion is absolutely necessary, but it still needs a kind of you know rational business case to to, to kind of you know what's in it for me, sort of uh, mm -hmm. answering that sort of question. So that'd be my reflection on the couple of days. Okay. When I was putting this event together, I was having a conversation with Simon Robinson from Melbourne Cares, and you know we're talking about the fact that there are a lot of strong pillars for CSR in Australia, and he likened what I was doing as putting a roof over the top of it and bringing everybody together. And I do think that there has been an incredible bringing together of everybody. Uh, we've had students, academics, business leaders, not-for-profits. Um, there's been a whole lot of um, good stuff come together here out of this. There has certainly been some discussion about putting together um, a movement of CSR in Australia. There has certainly been some discussion about let's change the name and let's not talk about 
corporate social responsibility, but maybe organisational responsibility. So perhaps there, as part of future discussions, we can look at some names and what that might um, look like here in Australia. Can I maybe just have a bit of a show of hands? And I have been talking to a number of people over the last few days, but could I just have a show of hands of people who might be interested and who thinks it's a good idea not just to necessarily sit with somebody else but to start our own movement and, and I'm really mindful of the fact that there are so many movements and so many memberships and associations out there but um, can I just have a show of hands of who thinks it might be a good idea that we come together and start to create a body for this business in Australia? Yeah? Okay, that's good. And that's the sort of feedback I was getting from, from other parties. So that's really interesting. And I think keeping that roof and keeping the strong directories of members, um, all that sort of thing, I think there's a whole lot of really healthy stuff. We will certainly continue to get your feedback. We will definitely um, do some coming together. And I like the idea of any conference that we can all participate in. Is there anyone here, and I have asked a number of you to be thinking about this, so is anyone here that would just, we don't have a lot of time and I don't want to take too much of um, you know, afternoon tea, but has anyone here got any thoughts that perhaps haven't been shared to date on where we might be able to go? David Morrissey. We owe you a huge uh, vote of thanks for doing the organising for this mega event. Uh, but the question arises, where do we go from here? Of course, you've raised it. But where do we go here, from here in terms of the people who aren't here, in terms of the people who are going from here back into their organisations and are going to have to face the issue of telling 20, 30, 50, 100,000 people or even a fraction of what they've learned from here? So it does seem to me that uh, while we're thinking summits, future summits, that's fine. But in the intervening period, uh, it's now down to the micro level. It's now down to the taking snippets from here and injecting it into the companies that aren't here and into the personnel departments and into the boards and into the CEO's offices uh, in little bite-sized chunks that they can cope with it. So I think you're on call for some mechanism of that order and perhaps it's along the line of CSR Europe or perhaps it should be the Business Council of Australia. I don't know, but certainly something that brings it back into the norms of information flow so it becomes part of what people do instead of something that's extraordinary. It's been extraordinary that it needs to become normal. Thank you. I had saw another name, um, Mike. What struck me is that the relationship between corporate responsibility and what we do in the compliance ethics governance is exactly parallel. There are some differences, but the nuances are really quite subtle. And what I'd like to do is make an offer. If you don't want to form your own association, we've got all the technology and all the gumph and systems and processes. We also have all the regulators and most of Big Enter Town and the academics all tied into our network. If you want to come in and form a chapter in there, it's just a button. Interesting, isn't it? Well, it's a very special button, but it's technically <laughs> very easy. Mary Ella, just over this far side, James. Mary Ella, James, over here. And did we have any others? Because we might sort of leave it at that. OK, Christopher. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Um, Anne-Marie did ask me to, well, I think it was to ask people to think about action steps from the conference and um, some Just of you... Just put Mary on it, yeah. find a bit closer. Sorry. Thanks. So action steps from the conference. Um, so most of you have seen us around with cameras uh, trying to interview people and, and talking to various people about things for a documentary series that we are, are in the process of trying to get up and running. And I, I want to thank everybody for your participation in that. Um, we haven't managed to get around to everybody and, uh, in fact, there are many people who we still need to talk to and so I'm, I'm really putting it out there just to say to people, uh, if you have a story in your organisation, if you have a story to tell, please contact us and let us know because we're really trying to do a documentary looking at best practice environmental, social and economic so solutions. Um, and you may well have amazing stories in your organisation and, and, and you may know of other people who have amazing stories. And that's what we're really trying to do, we're trying to tell this story. Mm. Um, and that, for me, uh, the communication process is absolutely crucial to inspire people, to uplift them. And I think for a lot of people who have seen the documentary The Corporation, the one person who stood out was Ray Anderson <coughs> in that. And in a way, what we're trying to do is to create a documentary filled with Ray Andersons, people who are so inspirational and um, encourage people to really make big shifts in their businesses and in their activities. So mm. that's what we're trying to do. So we're asking for um, support, information, advice, research, stories, people, characters, 
And as Crisula pointed out, we're only as good as our talent um, in our storytelling, so please come and talk to us with all of your talented mm. people and ideas, etc. So thank you. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Um, actually, the, we'll go over here and then come to Chris. Oh, you've got a microphone? Okay, Chris. First of all, I would like to say, as David said, thank you, Emery, for quoting me ever again. Pleasure. So far in Australia, I have never seen an event such as this, with such deep level of thought and achievement. I would like to suggest if we can do it, to make this event a biennial and look at something smaller on an even year, so that we can actually keep some of the momentum going. However, I appreciate we're going to have to look at how we can provide more support to you or other people to make this a reality. Thank you, Christopher. Simon? Um, yeah, I just, since we were chatting, I've moved on my thoughts from the pillars and the roof, and I'm thinking more, because through my experience of 18 months working in this area in Australia and 10 years with business community before that, um, I've got a, an idea that there's a lot of people doing a lot of good stuff, and a lot of them have been here over the last three days, and I'm thinking or seeing a bit of a, a flotilla of ships, and the summit becomes the, the lead ship, kind of setting the direction that we might all generally sail in, so everybody can sail their own separate ships, because a lot of them, an awful lot of them, uh, for profit and non-profit, um, but there's no lead ship, and maybe this is where the summit could play a role. Okay. One, one thing that I am going to ask you all to do, no doubt you're going to go away and talk to at least one other person. David's already, or Michael's already, one of them has suggested that you, um, you go and talk to one other person. Well, the one thing that I would ask is that if you've got a website, perhaps we can provide a piece from the webcast a segment from the webcast that might go on your websites that can promote the whole summit and encourage people to then go and maybe purchase a stream or the whole webcast or the whole DVD. We have got this at our fingertips and if every single one of us go to, we're, some of us are members of associations, if we go to our associations, we send it out through our associations, but through our own networks, if we all do that, there's been about 300 odd um, here in the last couple of days, you know, that could easily go to 3,000 like that. So if we just consider that as an option, that would certainly be very helpful. We could talk like this um, for hours. I think the feedback forms are important. I will be following up and talking to people and I'd be delighted for any of you to pick up the phone and to talk to me. So I'd, in closing, there's a couple of things. Firstly, I would seriously like to thank a whole range of people and this is the this is the part that's always tricky for me. <laughs> a lot of people. Tell you what, Anne-Marie, before you do that, so you, you gain your composure there. Before you thank the whole lot of people, <laughs> I think we need to thank this lady so she can recover her little competence. <laughs> Wednesday evening about a seed. And for sure, there was a seed in a little wooden hut in Tasmania in 2003. There was a group of six people. And we've talked about, over the last few days, awareness and intent. There was an awareness and intent, six people or so. Then it went to a bit of a tactical flurry. A few people still had a bit of energy. There was only one person who had this ongoing tenacity, courage, leadership, eternal optimism about this event, I have to say, who actually took it to actually the point of embedding implementation and strategic delivery, and that's Anne-Marie Huxley. And there is a metaphor for CSR. A lot of people will talk about it, get very excited and emotionally engaged. There'll be a flurry of tactical, but it takes a few true leaders like this, with broken flowers, <laughs> but they smell nice. So, Anne-Marie Huxley, <laughs> thank you very much. My pleasure. It seriously has been my pleasure. It's been an extraordinary journey. But I have not done this alone. There have been so many people, almost as many people outside of the room as there have been in the room, who've helped made this possible. To Dominique and Dee, you guys, 
you've saved my life. I mean, what you have done behind the scenes in the last five weeks has been extraordinary. I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for the support that you've provided. And you've even suggested that you might come for the journey next time round. <laughs> That's even more extraordinary. Thank you so much, Dominic and Dee. To the team at Professional Public Relations, I've thanked you on numerous occasions. You've worked tirelessly and some of you in the media stream today have perhaps gotten a glimpse of how hard they've worked and the obstacles that they've had along the way. Um, they have gone above and beyond the call of duty. Everybody who has touched this event has given way more than what they had committed to because they believe in this. They did design, they've done PR, uh, they've gotten um, their clients involved. It's been extraordinary. So particularly to Hilda, thank you so much. But the whole team at PPR, it's been extraordinary. Thank you. There are many sponsors and I would like to go through them all personally, but there really isn't a great deal of time. Um, you'll hear from perhaps one or two of them into the future as they sort of help us to develop some other programs, but I would particularly like to thank the speakers, we, particularly our international speakers. They have taken a week out of their very, very busy schedules to be here. So it's not just being away from their business, but being away from their loved ones as well. And I particularly want to acknowledge that and thank you so much for the, the really valuable contribution that you've made, not just to this summit, but to all of Australia. It has been an incredible service to you for Australia. So thank you so much. Tony Blair, it's going, to, it's going to enhance that relation between John Howard and Tony Blair now. I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but anyway. <laughs> to all of the Australian speakers, many of you have just... We've had over 50 speakers over these three days. It's been fantastic. Um, just in terms of a little bit of housekeeping, um, the David Grayson books, very difficult to get in Australia. Everybody's business is out of print. Um, we're going to have to pack books up and take them away. So if you, if you were thinking about getting one, it would be great to get them now to lighten our load um, in terms of packing up. Um, there are forms out the front and you've had them in your bags as well. So there are books, there are forms for the webcast, etc. Um, most of you have had a game in your pack, um, Children from Change. Um, it's an environmental game for children over the age of four. And I know some of you have got two and three children. Um, we would be delighted if rather than take one home, you know, feel free to, um, to pick some more up on the way home. Um, if you're working in an environment where there are um, children and you have playrooms, please uh, take them, put them in your playroom for the children. Um, the uh, people who have developed that program are very willing to take this into the marketplace. So if you feel that you can add some real value with those games, please uh, take them with you. I've been asked about delegate lists a number of times. We have said it before. You will all be emailed a delegate list. So that will be terrific to help keep in touch with various people. The, all the presentations, they're going to actually be on our website in about a week's time. We're not sure exactly how long it's going to take because there's over 40 hours worth of presentations and so forth to put together. The webcast is going to be available from the 7th, the DVD from the 14th. There are delegate prices, non-delegate prices. Um, the most important thing is we just get this information out there. So from Australia's inaugural CSR Summit, we did it. <laughs> and um, have afternoon tea, enjoy the last little bit of networking, and I will be in touch. Thank you all so much. Yay.